Screen Directors Playhouse, star Henry Fonda, production The Fugitive, director John Ford. <laughs> This is the Screen Director's Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. By RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, and by Chesterfield. Always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. And that's the biggest plus in cigarette history. Tonight, the Screen Director's Playhouse is pleased to present transcribed for the first time on the air one of the most human stories of our time, The Fugitive, starring Henry Fonda. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is tonight's star, Mr. Henry Fonda. The story of the fugitive is timeless. It is laid for the purpose of clarity in a Latin American country a thousand miles north or south of the Panama Canal. Who cares? For this could happen anywhere, and it has. For this story is true. It's a very old story. Its roots go back to biblical days. Yet even today, it's being repeated in Yugoslavia, Poland, Russia, Germany, China, and God help us, in some parts of these United States. Listen, then, to a story you've heard many times before, and let there be a prayer on our lips that the day will come when we will never hear it again. Thank you, Mr. Fonda. But before we present the first act, here's a message from the makers of Anison. Every day you hear more and more about an incredibly fast way to relieve the pains of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. It's Anacin. A-N-A-C-I-N. Now, the reason Anacin is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anacin is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anacin contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So the next time a headache strikes, take Anison. A N A C I N. Anison, in handy boxes of 12 and 30, economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. Ask for Anison at any drug counter. Now the first act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of The Fugitive, starring Henry Fonda in his original role of the priest with Lorene Tuttle as Maria Dolores. sound of crashing altars had echoed through our village. Inside our church, the wreckage lay as a policia had left it. Often I went there, I, Maria Dolores, to repent my sin. The tropical day was drawing to a sultry close when I glanced through the broken window and first saw him. The mule was tired, and the man slumped as he rode. When he came nearer, I saw his shabby clothes, but his black suit, the badge of merit, established him as a man above average. His nondescript shirt without a tie made him look like a priest. 
Almost. Sun shining through the bars of the broken window threw a cross of shadow upon the ground. Sadly, he dismounted and slowly walked into the house of God. Who are you? Oh, I didn't see you. Please go away. I want to pray alone. You startled me. In that shaft of light, you looked like the Madonna herself. I am no Madonna. Who are you? Why are you here? I belong here. No. I know all the men in this village. All? The men. I know all the men. Are you from the police? I'm hiding from the police. Oh, you're a criminal. Did you steal? Did you kill somebody? No. I'm a priest. This was my church. Oh. No, no, please don't kneel. What is your name? Maria Dolores. And your baby's name? My name, Maria Dolores. And your husband? I have no husband, Father. Look, Father. Look at the face of my child. She's pretty, no? Very. She is sweet. She is pure. She's never done anything wrong, but she has not been baptized. Could you give her a name, Father? So when she grows up to be married in a church, she can be called by name. When she is married in a church. There will be churches again. There will, won't there, Father? We must hope so. How long can one hope? In our village, they've given us hope. They say the priests have all left us, that the church is dead. There are many babies in the village like mine that have not been baptized. Is, is that why you've been sent here, Father? Perhaps. And you are not afraid? Oh, yes, I am afraid. Maria Dolores. Yes, Father. Go summon the others, tell them all to bring their babies. <laughs> they would not come for me. The men, yes. The men would come. Not the women. I see. Are you too afraid to call them? I don't know. I don't think so. Will you pray with me, Maria Dolores? Oh, yes, yes. It's been so long since... Let us kneel here together in silence. Yes, Father. I name you Maria Dolores in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. When you are finished with the others, you must come with me. No, I will stay here. There's much to be done to restore my church. We will help you. The whole village will help you. But we must work at night, and you must be kept in hiding. I cannot. You must. The police are everywhere. They would kill you the minute they, they knew you were a priest. I'm quite safe. I don't even look like a priest. You're never safe. Aren't you afraid anymore? Yes, I am. I will come with you, Maria Dolores. waiting for. I'm in charge here. Bring in the prisoners. They are here. Chargers? Ignacio Valdez, drunk and disorderly. Fine, five pesos. He can't pay you. He has nothing excellent. I am not excellency. Won't you people ever learn? I am an Indian like you are. Have pride. Stand up straight. Look me in the eye. Yeah. Let him work off the fine. Clean out the cells. Next. Inejo Martino, drunk and disorderly. Five pesos. Gaspar de Soto. Alcohol found in his possession. Ten pesos. Diego Gonzalez found wearing a holy medal under his shirt. A religious medal. Open his shirt. This medal will not be worn again. Superstitious fool. Thirty days in the bullpen. Hard labor. Take him away. Good afternoon. What are the rest of the charges? All drunk and disorderly. Ah, dismiss them. Eh? 
Thank you, Lieutenant, for doing my job. Uh, Somebody's got to carry on. Where were you? I was with the governor. He's in splendid health. You don't look very happy. Oh, yes, he's my friend. We understand each other. He did ask a few questions about you, Lieutenant. About me? What about me? Well, he had your report on his death. What about my report? You know how he feels about the clergy. I feel exactly the same way. We shot the last priest six months ago. He doesn't think so. Well, he's wrong. I tell you, the last priest was shot six months ago. You want to argue with the governor? Remember, he gets information we don't get. Oh, there's no doubt about it. What's the name of this priest? Who knows? What's his village? Don't know. What's his parish? Who knows? Where was he born? No idea. Ah, that's the trouble. Nobody knows anything when it comes to these traitors. No one talks. No one knows their names. They go from village to village. The people hide them in their barns, in their stables, under beds. Superstitious fools. They'll do anything to save a priest. Nobody even knows what they look like. How does the governor expect us to find a man when we haven't even got a photograph? This time the governor says we have. Here. Oh. You can tell he's a priest by the collar, that's all. No, no, it's not very good, but it's the best we've got. They all look alike to me. We've shot him a dozen times. Not this one. And the governor says we must have him before the rains come. We have killed every priest in the country. I don't know where this new one came from. But I know how to get this man before the rains come. You know what I'll do? Take hostages. Take a hostage from every village. If the people don't report him, if they don't give him up, I'll shoot the hostages. What's a little blood? Isn't it worth it to get rid of these people forever? I think the governor would agree. Then I have the authority? Go as far as you like, on one condition. The governor and I will hold you responsible if the priest is not caught before the rains. You've been asking for this. And if I don't find him? I should imagine you would be treated like one of your hostages. Good night, Lieutenant. Oh, uh, by the way, here's a picture of an American bank robber, El Gringo. Find him, too, and his 50,000 American dollars. And he came to our village to... Lieutenant and his men, riding roughshod over my people, the old, the crippled, and the young. And the crashing of the wares in the marketplace were no louder than the cries of despair in our hearts. I, the outcast, heard it from the church and heard also the steel shot hoo, which came charging up the steps and into desecrating the house of God. You, there in the shadows, line up with the rest of the plaza. The... Wait a minute. Yes, sir? Come into the light. Maria, what are you doing here? Why did you leave your village? My father made me leave after you left. I meant to come back. I had work to do. We're making a better world, Maria Dolores, for you and for him, too, your baby. It's a girl like me. What is her name? My name, Maria Dolores. How do you live? Do you work? I work. I wear the rose of the cantina in my hair. Why? Do you care? Lieutenant. In here, in the church. They're all corralled in the plaza. They're all... Uh, you, what are you doing here? Get out. Get out to the plaza. Get going. Get up off your knees. Go on, get her alone. What? We have work to do. Let's get out of here. They're all waiting for us at the plaza. we're here for. We're looking for a priest. You know what a priest is? A traitor to the Republic. Anyone who hides him is a traitor too. I know he's here. Oh, you superstitious fools. Do you still believe what the priest told you? They took your money. What did they give you? Anything to eat? Did they feed your children? No, they talked about heaven. They fill you full of lies. Everything would be fine when you die. They want you to die, these priests, not live. Where is the priest? Point him out. I'll find him. 
You know why? Because I am taking hostages. Do you think I like to shoot my own people? Believe me, I am one of you. This priest is a coward. If he were half the man you think he is, he would have given himself up to save you. Is it worth dying to save a man like that? Very well. You there, I'll take you. You can't. You can't take him, that's Miguel. He is an only son. Everybody here is somebody or somebody's son, I know that. Excellency. What do you want? He's too young, take me instead. Why should I take you? He's young, his mother needs him. Take me, I'm no good. You are no good as a man, you're no good as a hostage. You're frightened, you look frightened. I am. Get out of my way. Come along, Miguel. No! Get out of my way, coward. But I want you to take me, I'll be a good hostage. You will be good for nothing. Right! We didn't take your father. We're very happy. But that boy, Miguel. Lives must be lost for our faith, Father. There is not one of us here unwilling to make the sacrifice. Not one of you. I am the only one. How can you bear calling me father? Now, here's a word from RCA Victor. There's one good reason for you to buy television. It's fun. And there's no better reason for you to stop in at your RCA Victor dealers tomorrow and see the wide selection of RCA Victor television sets available now. You and your family will have a lot more fun every day of the week all year round with television in your home. Tomorrow you can buy the receiver you want, the right one to suit your budget. And here's a good reason for you to buy RCA Victor Television. It's the best. You get a clearer picture, a steadier picture, a picture locked in place with RCA Victor's exclusive eyewitness picture synchronizer. And besides the world of entertainment television brings you, you'll find the RCA Victor Television set of your choice is a magnificent addition to your living room. It's wonderful to look at, beautiful to see. RCA Victor Million Proof Television. And now the second act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of The Fugitive, starring Henry Fonda. Soldiers left the village, galloping up the stone steps of the churchyard, dragging a young hostage behind them, a rope around his neck. And when they had gone, the people took the priest to the edge of the village. And to me, Maria Dolores, the sinful one, fell the honor of walking beside the mule to point out the mountain path leading to freedom and sanctuary. You should ride mostly at night, Father. It is safer. I should not be leaving. This is my village, my parish. But they will find you here. Will they kill that boy, Miguel? Who knows? I could save him. And be killed yourself. You cannot bring the word of God that way, Father. I don't know. I don't think I'm a very good priest. You are a very good man. Oh, here's the beginning of your trail. Follow it. You will be safe if you are careful. Safe? Yes. Thank you, Maria Dolores. I shall not forget you. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye. Oh, oh, let him stay. What? What did you say? I said, lift him. And I meant it. Get those hands up. I have no gun. 
Well, I have. You're running too, aren't you? Running? Me? I never run, mister. You're suspicious of one who simply passes you on the road. You're afraid. I've never been afraid of anything. Do you know who I am? You're a frightened man running away. They call me El Gringo. There's a 5,000 peso reward on my head, which nobody will ever collect. You may be proud, my friend. They will only pay 1,000 pesos for my life. What? You too? What did you do? Not nearly enough. They can't hang you for that. I'm afraid they can. But I wouldn't let them. I wasn't brave enough for that. Wait a minute. 1,000 pesos. That's what they pay for priests in this country. So you... I was a priest. Don't take it so hard, buddy. You'll be okay. Will you? Me? I'll always be okay. Do you know what's in this briefcase? No. 50,000 good American bucks. You stole the money. Naturally. But only because I'm smarter than the rest of these monkeys. Did you kill to... Here and there. But don't let it bother you, Father. Would it help you to confess? Nah. <laughs> I'm not the religious type. But that's nice of you, Father. It's a long time since anybody cared whether they helped me or not. It is my job. Yeah, I know. I've got to be getting along, Father. You're going to keep running, huh? Yes. Somehow I doubt that. So long. Goodbye. It is too deep. What's that? Who are you? Under the trees. I do not like to stand up while the sun is high. It's more shallow further up. Thank you. Wait, I show you. Ah, oh, what a fine mule. A beautiful mule, huh? You must be a rich man. You come a long way, yeah? Where can I cross the river? Walk across right up here. Fine mule like that will take you. How much you pay for him, huh? How far is it to Puerto Grande? It's not far. Two, three days. On a mule like that, maybe one day, perhaps two. What do you want to go to Puerto Grande for? Uh, I have business there. Mm. What you carry in the costly bag, huh? Money? Perhaps a pistol? No. No. You do not speak much. I bore you? Very well, then I will entertain you. Here, you see my pretty pictures. See this man? Perhaps you met him on the road, huh? Perhaps. A big man. James Carver, it says. El gringo. Very brave. He held up a gringo bank. He stole the hundred dollars. Killed two, three people. Very brave man. He'd shoot you for nothing. I could admire such a person. Me, I am but a poor man. I do not even have such a beautiful mule. Have a banana. Where did you get those posters? Oh, the police, they put them up. I take them down. If I was more brave, maybe I might get a reward. Hmm. The police are fine men. Lots of money, beautiful horses. They do nothing and they get paid. When were they here? Mm, two, three days ago. I must go. Oh, you run from the police too, maybe? Your picture is here too, maybe? Goodbye. I found it. I found it. Your picture is here. Come back. One meter of a thousand pesos reward. But I am a full man. I will catch up with you. I will catch up with you. Rest here, my faithful friend. Some straw for you. A hut for me. Who's there? Hey, your friend. Your benefactor. Your servant, Mestizo. What do you want? I I got business in Puerto Grande, too. It's more safe to travel together. The gringo, you know, he'd shoot you dead for nothing. Me, I'll protect you because I'm trying to be a Christian. Are you? Are I what? A Christian? Of course. I'm a very good Christian. Then why is that hunting knife lying open on your lap? For your protection, naturally. Why? You do not trust me? It is difficult for me to trust a man who talks nonsense to my face while his hands explore my knapsack and the point of a knife lies facing my heart. I was simply looking to see if you were armed, if you have anything to drink. 
You have. It's good wine. I never drunk wine like that before. Oh, what a lovely taste. You know, it's against the law to have wine. They put you in jail for having wine. You see, I drink it. I'm protecting you. What is the matter? Do, do not look at me like that. Father, it, it wasn't consecrated, was it? The wine was not blessed, was it, Father? Why do you call me Father? Do not be afraid. I'm a good Christian. You're wrong. I can prove it easily, cannot I? All I have to say is, Father, hear my confession. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. You could not refuse him any more such sin, could you, you Father? You want the reward. I'm a poor man. No, do not move. I'm going out. I, I'm going with you. I'm going to protect you, Father, for myself. Listen, I have told you I'm in mortal sin. You cannot refuse him any mortal sin. Shall I tell you what I've done? No. I'm in mortal sin, Father. It will take all night to tell all my sins. I don't want to hear them. You've got to. It's your business. Put down that knife. No. No one has sinned as much as I have, Father. I'm a drunkard. I take money from women. Stay away. I don't... Yeah. 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 Father, do not leave me. Father, don't leave me. Next. One ticket, third class, please. Here you are. Next. What time does the boat sail? Ten minutes. Next. Father. Father, please. Oh, I'm sorry, son, if you're speaking to me. I, I must hurry. I'm late. Please, Father. Quiet right here. Walk over to this corner with me. Now, why do you call me Father? Don't you know me, Father? I'm Luis Juarez. You gave me first communion. My mother is sick. She is dying. I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can do. Won't you come to her? She needs you, Father. I must sail on this boat. Does this boat need you more than my mother? No. No, I don't think it does. It was very brave of you to come, Father. We are most grateful. It was the faith of your son that gave me the courage. My wife was a good woman. She worked hard all her life. A good wife, good mother. She deserves the mass to be said. Have you any mass wine in the house? It is forbidden. Can you get any? Mine has been stolen. Uh, I will try. It is better if you tell me where. Uh, my son will show you. Uh, Father, if you are caught... I know. Are you afraid, Louis? Not with you, Father. Imagine. Not being afraid with me. Twenty pesos. It was very expensive wine. Father, the police... Leave me, Louis. Find your way home. What? Go on. Hurry, boy. Oh! What are you carrying? It's... Give me the bottle. Wine. It's forbidden. You need no trial. Into the bullpen with you. With a word about vacations. Oh, Ken, when you mention vacations, it brings a tear to me eye and a lump in my throat. Poor Uncle Herbert. Well, what happened to your Uncle Herbert? Uncle Herbert loves to fish. So on his vacation, he hired himself off all alone to a secluded spot way back in the woods. Poor Uncle Herbert. He uh, forgot his fishing pole? He forgot his Chesterfield. Oh. So friends, take a tip from me. Whether you're packing to take off for the weekend or for that long-anticipated vacation, pack a couple of cartons of those milder Chesterfields. When you take off on a trip like that, you, you like to go where you want and do what you want. So take along the cigarette that gives you what you want. 
Chesterfield. Chesterfield gives you its famous ABCs. Always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking. Plus, no unpleasant aftertaste. Yep, the country's first and only cigarette taste panel reported. Of all brands tested, only Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. Vacation time, anytime. Take Chesterfield's with you. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's All-Star Festival, brought to you by the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia, by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, and by Chesterfield, always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste, and that's the biggest plus in cigarette history. The Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of The Fugitive, starring Henry Fonda, will continue in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. This is the Screen Director's Playhouse. We continue transcribed with the third act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of The Fugitive, starring Henry Fonda in his original role of the priest with Lorene Tuttle as Maria Dolores. For two days, he stayed in the filth of the bullpen. Then the lieutenant had him brought up for sentencing. He went, full of the bitter knowledge that he had not performed his mission. The mass where his dead parishioner was still unsaid. Where did you get the wine? I was sent to a man. What was his name? I do not know. Then how did you find him? He was waiting for me. Haven't I seen you before? Uh, I don't think so. Benete, we're ready to shoot the hostage. I'm busy. Take my pistol. Yes, sir. Which hostage, Lieutenant? From the village of... Ah, that is where I saw you. What are you doing here? Uh, you are a boozer. Got a wife? No. Ah, uh, don't lie to me. She gives you money to buy a dress. You come down here and get drunk, huh? Now you are broke, that it? Ah, uh, never mind. Here, come to the window. Ah, uh, I'd rather... Come! Not... This boy is from your village. You will see him die. Ready? Then you can tell your people hey! what happens to those who shield a priest. Ah! Miguel. Now go back to your village. As I left, he shoved some pesos into my hand and said gruffly, Get yourself something to eat. I started the long journey back to my little village. I was free to come and go as I pleased, but only as long as I could keep them from discovering that I was a priest. The lieutenant had recognized me as the hostage he didn't want, and I knew that it would not be long before he examined the police posters carefully and discovered who I was. The moment of charity he had displayed to me did not mean that he could not be as cruel as he had always been. But it gave me the certain knowledge that in his soul he still had the faith with which he'd been born, but which he'd spent his life denying. My thoughts racing through my mind were faster than my feet, but I finally saw the dim light of the cantina of my village and wearily turned toward the door. As I walked in, I saw a slight move from a table toward the rear. A man was sitting there alone, and it looked to me as though he'd pulled his gun when I walked in. I couldn't make out his face in the dim light. Maria Dolores walked toward me as I sat down at a table, her face drawn with fear, and without a word, 
placed a pitcher of water in a glass before me. As she walked away, I heard the one word whispered behind my ear, Ringo. Come here, sister. Yes, sir. Give me another bottle to take with me. Here's the money. Oh, this is too much. I know it is. Give the change to him. To him? Yeah, the monkey that just came in. Looks like he needs it. I'll tell him. Tell him nothing. Just give it to him. And see that, it, that you give it all to him. Yes, sir. Good night, Father. Father, we thought you were out of the country. It was not to be, Maria. Yes, sir. They shot Miguel. I feel as though I've murdered him myself. Oh, you're tired, Father. You must sleep. And then you must get over the mountains. That is the only way now. Yes. I must sleep a few hours. I hope they will give you the few hours. As soon as you can, we must start. I'll go with you. I must sleep. Yes. Come into my bedroom. There's just the baby asleep. I'll bring your food. It's all ready. Sit at this table behind the door. The reason I'm going with you, Father, is that I know the way. Besides, you'll be in less danger. They'll, they'll think I'm your wife and Maria Dolores is your baby. Oh, I hope you're not offended, Father. Are you? Father, are you offended? <laughs> asleep, sound asleep. I will pray they don't come. I will pray for your safety. Jose, quick, the guitar, start playing, singing. Maybe they're walking in. They will keep them out of my bed. Open up. What happened there, police? Come in. Ah, Sergeant. You're welcome. Now, Bess, knock off that music. Anyone else here? No. It is late. What's behind that door? My baby. I'll take a look. Please don't wake her. She's asleep. Please. I'll look the whole place over more carefully later. But right now, as long as that brass hat lieutenant isn't here, I suppose you tell me what you keep behind the bar. Priest, maybe? <laughs> maybe a sergeant. Maybe drink for the sergeant? Oh, it's against the law, sergeant. Maybe drink for the sergeant? Maybe. What about the law? <laughs> you see these stripes? I'm the law. <laughs> Help me open the bottle. <laughs> oh, it's good for a dusty throat. Up a little dance, sweetheart. Dancing goes good with wine. Oh, I don't think I'd better. Oh, it's all right with me. It's too noisy in here anyway. What else is inside that door besides your baby, huh? Maybe kiss for the sergeant. I think we'd better dance. We can't dance in there. All right. Out here suits me. Well, I, I can't dance in this dress. Give me two minutes to change. Right. Alone. Oh. Promise? Go ahead. Father. Father, wake up. Wake up. What? What is it? Quiet. The police, they hear. You must get away. There's not a minute to lose. Get out this window and through that cornfield. Get across the river somehow and wait for me there. I'll find you. Well, what are you going to do? Me? I'm going to do what I've been doing for men for years, Father. I'm going to dance for them. But this time I'll know why I'm dancing. God bless you, Maria Dolores. Hurry. to be enticed by any skirt that shows her legs? And you? What are you with your painted face and your fancy dress? What are you? Tell me! Hi. I am the mother of your child. Lieutenant! Lieutenant! Yes, what is it? The priest is making his way through the cornfield and food. Get out of here, you swine, all of you. Back to your duty. I want this man surrounded and brought to me. I want to take care of him myself. Dead. 
Then the hunt began. They rode back and forth across the cornfield, slashing at shadows, spurring their horses through clumps of bushes. And I wondered how it was possible for mortals ever to be so savage about other mortals. I didn't know which way to turn and finally fell into a small clump of bushes at the edge of the field. I lay there panting and then felt the presence of someone looking at me. I opened my eyes and looked straight into the evil face of El Gringo. Get up, Father. If I can? You can. When your life depends on it, you always can. Come on. Why are you helping me? I don't know. I guess because our pictures are hanging in the same gallery. Now look, this trail, follow it. It takes you over the mountains. It's a tough trip, but not as tough as lying down and not getting up again. It's no use. They saw me. They know I'm here. There are too many of them. There are more of us than you think. You've never seen me shoot, have you, Father? Too bad you won't have time to stick around and watch me. It ought to be quite a sight. You can't hold off a whole troop of cavalry. Maybe not, but don't lay any odds. There are a few of those guys I'm going to get rid of, just for my own happiness. All right, Father, enough talk. Let's get going. It seemed to me I had been running away all my life, but I went. The trail was long, with every footstep I took imprinted more deeply in my mind the unrelenting fusillade of shots that I'd run away from. The picture of El Gringo lying alone, an evil smile on his lips, coldly and steadily killing everyone within range of his pistol. For me, the lieutenant, the man who spent his life hunting down priests, he had given me money. He had been kind to me. The gringo, a robber, a murderer, had taken up a one-man garrison to cover my escape. I began to feel some of my own physical cowardice being replaced by a certain calmness. A more sure belief that I had been put on earth for a reason. I began to want to live more than I ever had before, because I had a job to do. Two of the most wicked men I had ever known had taught me that there was faith, even in the worst of men. I don't know how many hours or days later I stagger to a house marked with a red cross and the sign, Dr. Johann Mayer, M.D. I guess I collapsed because when I knew anything again, I was in bed and the doctor was talking to me. Have some coffee, Father. It will do you good. Thank you. Can you really call me Father and not be in fear? Yes, indeed. You have crossed the border and are in a friendly and God-fearing land. How long have you tried to fight the revolutionists? Five years. Very long time. You've shown great courage. No. It wasn't courage, Doctor. I can't deceive myself. It was nothing but pride. I see it now. It was pride. Go on, Father. I think it is good for you to talk. Yes, it's been so long since I have. The first year, well, the whole thing seemed fantastic. I couldn't believe there was any real reason to leave the country. Things like that have happened before. Of course. I thought I'd stay another month and see if things got better. Then another month and another month. You know how time goes by. Then I began to lose grace. I began to have pride. I began to think I was a brave man. Who knows, a martyr. I suddenly realized I was the only priest left in the country. Those who weren't shot had escaped. They went. I can't blame them. They were quite right to go. But in my growing pride, I didn't understand that. Yes, I see. There was one priest in particular, a man who had always disapproved of me. He said, and quite rightly, that I was not a firm character. Yes, I had a colleague like that in Vienna. We'd gone to school together. He'd always made fun of me for being timid. Well, when he took to his heels, I felt... You laugh at this, doctor? I felt like the little schoolboy who'd licked the bully. I won't laugh. You see, doctor... It was pride at work all the time. Don't be so hard on yourself, Father. A man is entitled to a little pride. Not in my profession. I began to build a fine lie and wear it like a proud cloak. The strange thing is that all the time I knew in my heart that I wasn't cut out to be a martyr. When the real test came, I couldn't measure up. I didn't have the courage. I was afraid to give myself up. I let men die for me. Innocent people. It was all vanity, empty pride. Then I committed the unforgivable sin, despair. In those last terrible moments, I had no real faith to back me up. 
because I had no real love for God. I see it very clearly now. In running away from my people, I've run away from God. I am not going to tell you to stop being harsh with yourself. In your work, as well as mine, it is well known how therapeutic it is to bear the soul. Now, it'll be good for you to rest. Thank you, doctor. I am tired. I'll be back later. Relax. The more rest, the better. Father. Miss Tiso. Oh, no, not here. Do not be frightened, Father. I'm your friend. I am here on an errand of mercy. I'm sure. And have you brought your friends, the police, with you? Police? Oh, what things you say, Father. Look, I'm here to do good. Believe me, Father, I want to make up for my sins. I have two mules outside. Hurry, Father, the man is dying. What man? El gringo. He is repented, Father. He is dying. He wants you to come. You cannot refuse a man who is dying, can you, Father? He's killed. He has robbed. He has so much to confess. He has never betrayed his friends. Oh, go back where you came from. Do you think I'm a fool? But he is dying, Father. He is asking for a priest. Stop lying. I'm not. I prove it. Here, look at this paper. It's his police picture. No, on the other side. In the name of God, Father. Who wrote it? The gringo, Father. On my word of honor. Your word of honor. You... You still think I am lying? Yes, I do, but I can't take the chance. What the devil are you doing here? Beat it, Father. How long has it been since your last confession? Ten years, I guess. Beat it, Father. Don't you want to confess? No. You did when you wrote this? I didn't write it. Beat it, Father. Get out of here. Remember, you're dying. You're given this chance to confess. You won't have another. Father. Yes? Under my arm. Get my gun. You're going to need it. Listen to me. You believed once. Try and understand. This is your chance. At the last moment, like the thief on the cross. Oh, I know you've sinned a great deal. That only belongs to this life. It's over already. You can drop it all here and go on forever. Forget about me, Father. Look after yourself. This was just a trick. A trick. May eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. Let perpetual light shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed. In the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Have you quite finished? Yes, I have finished. While you were preparing to administer the last rites, we were holding your trial. You see, we expected you. Yes, I rather imagined you did. You have been tried and found guilty. Couldn't I have been present at my own trial? It wouldn't have made any difference. When do I... In the morning. I shall be ready. It's bad to be alone on a night like this. I'd rather be alone. I have so much to think about. May I ask you a question, Lieutenant? When did you lose faith? When I found a better one. Oh, yes. As a boy, I believed all the lies your people told. What trickery it all was. What a fake. Sell all and give to the poor. Your people seize all and give to the party. Is that better? To the people, not the party. Uh, The people better off. They seem even poorer. We work for the future. That's what you accuse us of, working for the future. Uh, Your idea of the future is after death. It's a very long time, eternity. You twist everything around. That's why you're so dangerous. That's why you have to be killed. Instead of answering the question, you shoot the man who asks the question. Is that it? It ends the argument, doesn't it? Ends it. Are you sure? Look, I have nothing against you as a man. I know that. It's God you're against. I'm the sort of man you lock up every day and give money to. You're so cunning, you people. You're so smug and so smart. Well, we're running things now. We'll give people food instead of prayers. Food, books, bread, all the bread they can eat. And what happens afterwards, when everybody has got enough bread to eat and can read the right books, the books you let them read, what happens, Lieutenant? Nothing. Death is a fact. We don't lie about facts as you do. You'll find your real troubles begin when you've given the people enough bread, which I doubt you'll ever do, Lieutenant. We have facts, too. Facts we don't lie about. 
For instance, man doesn't live by bread alone. A yeah, fine excuse to deny him his rightful share of bread. Let him starve and suffer. Oh, he'll suffer anyway. Don't you suffer? I can see it in your face. Leave me out of it. You say we have only one kind of hunger. You say we are animals that only want food and a place to sleep and the limited knowledge you call truth. Well, we don't believe that man is so small as that. We love him more. We say he hungers for these things, yes, but that he hungers for something else. You make man too small, Lieutenant. I hate your arguments. If you see somebody in pain, people like you say perhaps pain is a good thing. Right now, you're shivering in your boots because you're afraid of a little pain when you're shot. Oh, but I'm not a saint. I'm not even a brave man. I am the one who loves the people, not you. I want to let my heart speak. At the point of a gun? Yes, at the point of a gun, if necessary. One must do many things for love. I'm fighting for our people. Are you sure you love the people? Perhaps you love only those who obey you and believe the dreams you tell them. Because that gives you power. Isn't your fight for power as mine was for pride? To make your power safe, you've got to kill everyone who's against you. But you can't kill them all, Lieutenant. For everyone you kill, there will always be someone to replace him. That's what really frightens you, isn't it? You're the one who is frightened. I'm a little man. The priesthood is large. It's tremendous. I was always too small for it. You know, it's very strange. I'm beginning not to be afraid. Even you believe in God. That's not true. Of course you believe. That's why you're so afraid. You want to kill God, and you can't do it. You think that by shooting us, you'll get rid of him. You know, Lieutenant, we have a lot in common. We have nothing in common. Yes, we've been very much alike. In my fear, I ran away from my people, and I found I was running away from my faith. You're trying to run away, and it's harder for you. You're backed into a corner, so you've got to use a gun. Words, words, lies. Yes, you're angry now. You think you hate me, but that's only because you're afraid. It's only the indifferent man, the man who feels nothing who's lost. You're a brave man. You'll fight and fight. But you can't get away from what's inside. And it's a lot of nonsense. You can't tell me you're not afraid. Listen, priest. Do you want to die? Oh, no. Then maybe I can save you. I'll go to the governor myself. Renounce your faith publicly in the plaza tomorrow. Say to the people you've been telling them lies. Oh, now you want me to save you. Since you can't get God out of your heart, you want me to say publicly he doesn't exist. You want me to help you destroy him? No, Lieutenant. That's all I can do. Do you want some brandy? It'll make it easier in the morning. That's very kind of you, but no, thank you. It'll make you forget? No, Lieutenant. I want to live my death. I, Maria Dolores. I have brought you your crucifix for tomorrow. Thank you, Maria. And tell my village to have faith. For when they kill me, they kill nothing but a man. And someone else will carry the faith. Someone braver than I. No one could be braver, Father. Goodbye. Goodbye, my dear. Wait, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Take my gun. You administer the coup de grace. I'm busy. I'll get going. Yes, sir. Hey! What's the matter, Lieutenant? Aren't you going to watch the execution? Oh, I have something else to do. Aren't you feeling well, Lieutenant? There's nothing wrong with me. I'm going to my quarters. Why, Lieutenant? I, I've forgotten something. 
No, Lieutenant. The trouble with you is that you've not forgotten something. I'm going to the Hotel Splendide. There's wine there. Much wine. And I'm going to get very drunk. God. Have mercy on my soul. Thank you, Henry Fonda, for a most inspiring performance. Mr. Fonda will return in just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Next week, the Screen Director's Playhouse presents a drama at the feet of justice. The motion picture story, Remember the Night. Our stars will be William Holden with Nancy Gates. And our screen director, Mitchell Lyson. And now, here again is tonight's star, Henry Fonda. For over a quarter of a century now, directed by John Ford on a motion picture screen has meant exceptional and distinguished entertainment. Achievements such as The Informer, Stagecoach, and many others equally outstanding have assured audiences of the very best the art of motion pictures can contribute. I'm proud to say that I have had the privilege of working for John Ford, and I'm proud to say he's my friend. Mr. Roberts, say Hank. Why, George Sidney. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present the newly elected president of the Screen Directors Guild. Another of Hollywood's really great talents. George, take a bow. Thank you, Hank. But tonight it's you who should take the bow for the performance we've all just heard. I sure wish John Ford were here to have heard it for himself. But you know, at the moment he's in Ireland directing another great picture. By the way, Hank, you know, we've all missed you for a long time. When are you coming home? I don't know, George. Maybe when the run of Mr. Roberts is over. (laughs) That's not very encouraging. Mr. Roberts seems to go on forever. But we'd like you to know, we're always waiting to welcome you back to Hollywood anytime you're ready. And we look forward to seeing you again here on the stage of our screen director's playhouse. Good night, Hank. Good night, George. Good night, everyone. was presented through the courtesy of RKO Radio Pictures, whose current release is the Howard Hughes production, His Kind of Woman, co-starring Robert Mitchum and Jane Russell, and featuring Vincent Price. Henry Fonda is currently appearing in the stage production, Mr. Roberts. Included in tonight's cast were Loreen Tuttle as Maria Dolores, Marvin Miller as the lieutenant, Tony Barrett played the sergeant, Bill Johnstone, the chief of police, Harry Guardino as the gringo, Paul Fries, the mestizo, Ralph Moody, the doctor, and Jerry Farber as the boy. Remember, it's Herbert Marshall as the man called X tomorrow on NBC. NBC.